Asian research question states and holds the intention to understand how we can use the universal design for learning framework of multiple means of engagement to improve classroom management in grade five, six split classes. The purpose and problem of this study is that as educators, we are learning to understand the importance of classroom management techniques, which include the process by which educators and school communities create and maintain appropriate behaviors in classroom settings. From our experiences, classroom management techniques vary not only by grade level, of the child but of the development level they're at and maybe their exceptionalities. This is a problem we wanted to research because it seems to be a reoccurring challenge and theme when we connect with other educators. We currently understand that classroom management plays a very major role in every experience during the school day, from transitioning period to period, engaging with students in the task at hand, and ensuring students are actively listening and learning. We believe that through the framework of universal design for learning, we are able to focus on multiple means of engagement when initiating management techniques. This guideline mentions that to recruit interest in students, we must minimize threats and distractions in our classroom. One way to accomplish this is the creation of stable classroom routines, such as charts, calendars, schedules, visual timers, cues, and anything that can increase predictability of the daily activities and transitions. We believe that a classroom routine includes effective classroom management techniques that fit the need of all learners. This includes the connections with students to encourage them to take part in their own learning, and sharing a little bit of yourself while ensuring they are actively listening. In doing so, we hope to create a positive classroom environment where students feel safe to actively express their emotions, thoughts, and ideas. Our current understanding and belief is that if an educator holds limited classroom management techniques, this correlates to inadequate experience, a smaller amount of knowledge base of what the variety of techniques are and how to incorporate them. As educators, we hold the belief that we must be proactive in knowing our students and school community. When learning to understand classroom management techniques, we find ourselves on a path searching for the following. More confidence when applying these skills, ensuring we want to improve our students' meaningful engagement, focus level, and socio-emotional growth, and the desire to fill our toolkit with classroom management techniques that are equitable for all members of the classroom. For our literature synthesis in the resources that we looked at and read, we found 12 stars to strategies approaches. So if you want to have a list of that, just have a look at the poster. Um, we also found the use of universal design for learning, which is to create a more equitable and innovative environment by identifying and uh, eliminating all barriers. So there's three core components. The first one is having multiple means of representation to give diverse learners options for acquiring information and knowledge. Um, we've got multiple means of action and expression to provide learners with options for uh, demonstrating what they know and then multiple means of engagement to tap into learners' interests, uh, offer appropriate challenges, and increase their motivation. We've also then got classroom management, which is a big one. It is becoming increasingly challenging in an educational system that is changing, especially in multi-grade classrooms. Things such as student behavior, social skills, interests, and abilities, uh, they all have an impact on teachers' abilities to manage the classroom. We need to have a toolkit, things that can help, which could be things like a lot of engagement, support, and consistency. Um, and then there was finally engagement and behavior, so attending to the social, emotional, and cognitive needs of mental aspects of learning, so that students feel more confident with routines and know what's expected of them in and outside of the classroom. There's definitely a need for positive relationships and authentic instruction. Um, the students will be disciplined through positive reinforcement, and it will allow students to, to flourish. There are positive behaviors, feelings of comfort, enjoyment, respect, and active interest. Those will all result. To understand that our intervention strategies and approaches could almost be like the medicine you take when you are sick. These remedies that you engage in to make yourself feel better. In respect to our study, these intervention practices provide us with insight of how to support students in multi-grade classrooms, specifically focusing on grade 5 and 6. As educators, we have been taught by Priori 2014 that we are able to create a positive classroom management techniques through love, engagement, consistency, and support. One of the primary intervention practices, which can be found in our question, stems from the implementation of universal design for learning. This is a framework to improve and optimize teaching and learning for all people based on scientific insights of how humans learn. This pedagogical structure guides the design of instructional goals, assessment methods, and environmental factors that can be accommodated for the intention of supporting the learning. This creates a safe environment where students are able to access their greatest potentials while ensuring they have a foundation of trust with their teacher. 
This method is linked closely with Davies, Summers, and Miller's 2012 relationship-based management approach and caregiver management orientations. This non-traditional approach provided the understanding that we as teachers have learned we are only capable of changing ourselves. Leadership in the classroom partaking in this approach creates an atmosphere of shared responsibility to the daily operations of the classroom, such as classroom management. By creating positive relationships, we are able to govern the classroom behavior in a context that leads to students to hold the willingness to reflect and change individual behaviors. Through this, we are abiding by the principles outlined by Reyes, Brackett, Rivers, White, and Slavoi, 2012, which include being sensitive to students' needs, fostering warm student-teacher relationships, always taking students' perspectives into account, and reframing from using sarcasm or harsh disciplinary practices. As educators, our toolkits when approaching multi-grade classrooms must be filled with the strategies to approach the ever-changing needs of our students. To implement positive classroom management techniques that support engagement, we provide toolkit elements from the Genova 2020, which include having an entry routine, the do now strategy, going behavior specific praise and props, these methods in combination hold the common theme of positive reinforcement as a form of discipline to love, support, engage, and be consistent with our students in multi-grade classrooms. To ensure that our study is reliable and valid, we will involve both teachers and students in multi-grade classrooms who have provided consent to participate in the study. The principal of the facility will oversee the project as they are the one that holds the duty of being responsible for anyone on the grounds. And the educators of the classroom, they will be the primary researchers. So you will create and collect the data as well as an analytically find themes to develop a solution. If there are any other grade five, six foot classes in the area from different schools, they will also be invited to partake in the study. Completing research in the education field, ethical considerations are always crucial to consider. We must adhere to the principles we developed for the intended research as it provides protection for the rights, welfare, and dignity of those who are participating. We, as data collectors, have created a few principles we will honour during our study. This includes being clear and consistent with the intentions and purpose of gathering data, informing the participants of the purpose, and that privacy will be maintained when sharing the information. This is in respect to the parents' and student right to privacy provided by the Education Act. We will also provide assurance that participant responses will remain confidential and anonymous. We will also let the participants know that they are able to drop or discontinue from the research at any time of their choosing, while ensuring that we create an inviting, safe, and non-judgmental atmosphere for participants to express their thoughts, opinions, and experiences. We have three data sources. The first one is interviews with our two focus groups, unstructured interview questions for students and teachers, an informal and flexible conversation. So with the teachers, we would ask about their own utilization of UVL to improve classroom management. Uh, with the students, we would converse with them regarding how they feel and understand learning in an environment that uses the recipe for classroom management. So that's love, support, consistency, and engagement. And our second resource is the use of questionnaires and surveys. So again, open and closed ended questions to gauge how teachers are understanding and implementing multiple means of engagement in a classroom to support classroom management. The third resource is anecdotal notes. We will be providing, we provided with insight into teachers' daily strategies. We will have notes on how students react to the strategies being used, what might be working versus what isn't working, and how the teachers personally feel engaging these strategies while um, comparing their use of the custodial versus caregiver approach, etc. There's more. Um, but we would also have a standard list of prompts or things to make sure that are being observed or written about. This study will take course over an entire school year in all the grade 5 6 classes located in one school. Utilizing the method of triangulation, teachers and students will engage in completing questionnaires and interviews, while educators will make notes of daily observation through anecdotal notes. Through this chart, we are able to see that questionnaires will occur at the beginning of the study and throughout. These will be collected monthly, commencing in September as a diagnostic to see where the educators are in their understanding of classroom management in multi grade classrooms. Interviews will com be completed in the months of October, December, and June. Student and teacher interviews will occur at the beginning to see what the environment is like before, then at the end for a definitive of what strategies were used to create a more engaged student body and positive classroom environment. Finally, anecdotal notes will be collected monthly commencing in September. 
These notes might mention student skills, knowledge, attitudes, interests, behaviors, and classroom incidences, along with the classroom management techniques used to mitigate these factors. And finally, the data analysis. So this is our process. We will be collecting qualitative and quantitative data. With the interviews, all of the responses will be recorded and compiled. With the surveys and questionnaires, due to the open and closed-ended questions, we will be categorizing the data into themes and similarities and patterns observed. With the anecdotal notes, we will collect the data on a monthly basis. Um, teachers will be understanding students' skills, their attitudes, their interests, their behaviors, and any incidents in the classroom while describing the management strategies being used. For all the data sources, we will be analyzing the responses to find the common descriptors, the patterns, the themes, and changes in those observations that teachers and students are making in their classroom, and especially noting when these changes happen or start. So we'll be collecting and asking for the data relating to what students, what the classroom looks, sounds, and feels like with minimal classroom management techniques, but also effective classroom management techniques, both being implemented. The sources will be used to determine the impact of effective classroom management and what to see what works efficiently in multiple grade classrooms as it all develops throughout the study.